Welcome to the LHA Church Podcast. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the message today. For more information about this podcast and other resources, visit lhachurch.com. Mark chapter 12 is where we're going to head together this morning. You know, what we do with our time in life says a lot about our priorities. This week and uh, over the last, actually the last couple of weeks, I am, like many of you, I'm sure you've seen a lot of posts, people have been on spring break, and, and uh, for those that uh, are still spring breaking it, and you and I are looking out and seeing snow on the trees, I keep seeing pictures of the Caribbean, and I keep seeing people standing on the beach, and uh, it says what we do with our time, what we do with our activities in life says a lot about our priorities, and sometimes those priorities is pulling away from the business of life and taking a break. Sometimes it is a part of the process of daily living where we actually really truly see the priorities and what is most important to us. You know, we can spend a lot of time, though, friends, in life doing some really good things. We can be busy doing great things, but I wonder sometimes if we take time to sit back and consider, are we doing great things in our lives? You've probably heard it said before that the main thing is that the main thing stays, what? The main thing. And in our new series that we're heading into for this year, into the lead series, we cannot underestimate the significance of this truth. One of the main things in our lives, there's probably no greater power in the world than this thing. There's probably no greater change can be brought to our lives through this vehicle than anything else. One of the main things in our life is that of love. Love is the determiner of our priorities. Love is the litmus test for our commitments. Love in your life and in my life is active and not passive. Love is often defined in these words, an intense feeling or a deep affection. Love is not cheap. Love's not whimsical. But rather love is intense and love is deep. Love is absolutely not passive. In fact, it is much the opposite. It is the love of country that drives men and women to leave family and friends and go to serve their country. And often for many of them, it is at the expense of their own lives. It was the love of God. John 3 and 16 tells us it was the love of God for you and for me and for this entire world that God gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross that you and I might have eternal life. As parents... You understand what it is to have a love for your kid, and you'll do so giving up all for the benefit of that child. Love is powerful. Love is a driving force in our lives. Those we love or the ideas we love will cause us to give up all to keep them. Love will drive you and I sometimes to do things that to some might seem irrational and illogical. It's because love is powerful. This morning we're going to look at what the Word has to say about love and how do we love and how do we make sure that love stays the greatest thing in our lives. Our passage this morning in Mark chapter 12 begins to give us some insight into this Mark 12, beginning in verse 28, then one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And the second is this, 
love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Now, the reality is in this world you and I live in today, there are many things that are clamoring for our time. People are calling for our time. You know, one of the things probably I have noticed in my lifetime is as cell phones have not only come into the world, but they have evolved. And all of the things now, most of you have a smartphone and you carry that phone around. And the truth is most of what we do on that phone is more than talk on the phone. In fact, talking on the phone is probably one of the least things that we actually do. And isn't it ironic that then as texting came in and everybody got engulfed in texting, have you ever noticed now that if somebody sends you a text and if you don't respond in five minutes, the earth is starting to shatter. And people will send you a text, what's wrong? Are you upset with me? Because you haven't responded in the first couple of moments of time. The truth is the world you and I live in today is full of things and people that are calling for our attention. Many things want our time. Many things want our heart. Many things want our energy. But Jesus said the greatest thing that you and I can be involved in is this, loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. If at the end of the day, if at the end of the week or the month, after you and I have extended all of our energies, if we have not loved the Lord our God, then we've done a lot of good things, but we've not done the greatest thing. So why is the commandment, this commandment, the greatest commandment? Why did Jesus say the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength? I would submit to you today, it is the greatest commandment because he's worthy. He's worthy of our love. Every person in this room today has the capacity to love. And every day that you and I live, we spend that capacity to love on something. Maybe you say, well, I love my wife, or I love my kids, or I love my church, or I love shopping, I love cooking. Uh, those of you on the other, I love eating, and I love doing this, and I love doing that. There's so many things we enjoy, whether it's hobbies or basketball games or baseball games, things we love to do. Every day that you and I live, we spend down our capacity to love on something. And, and when you and I get to the bottom of that capacity, if we have not loved the Lord our God with all of our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength, then we have spent our capacity on things that are temporary and not on things that will last. God is worthy of... Of our love. There is nothing and there is no one who's more worthy to receive our love than the Almighty God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 11 says, Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. Psalm 35 and verse 10, my whole being will exclaim, who is like you, Lord? You rescued the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and the needy from those who robbed them. Psalm 71 and 19, your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, God? Psalm 89 and verse 8, who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You are Lord. Can you say amen to that phrase? Amen. You are Lord and are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. When you and I understand the power, we understand the might and the awesomeness of God, and then we look at the trivial things we give our affections to and the things that we have given our time and our energy and our strengths, we begin to realize nothing compares 
to him. I can give my time. There's so many things in life that I do enjoy doing. But you know, all of those things are created things. My ultimate love and my ultimate affection should go to the creator of all those things. You see, I have good things that I can enjoy because I have a good God who created them. We look at things and we say, well, you know what? I shouldn't enjoy those things because I love God and I need to put God first. Listen, it's okay to enjoy life. God put life here. He put you and I in this world. There are things he's given for us to enjoy. All he's saying is let's keep it in proper perspective. Let's not let the creative thing get more worship in our life than the creator of those things. I ought to worship him because he made all those things to be a blessing in my life. We're to love God with all of our heart because he's so worthy. I would submit to you as well, we're to love him because of all the good things he does for us. When you sit back and you think over your life and you consider all of the good things that he's done in your life, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5, gives us these words, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never, here's a, you, you, you and I could live by this phrase. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Not just past, but present and future. God's not just good in the good old days. God's good today. Can you say Amen. And you know what? Tomorrow, I don't know whether tomorrow it'll be 80 degrees or a blizzard. I don't know if we'll get a drought or lots of rain. But I do know this. Tomorrow when the sun comes up, God will still be good. And his mercy and his blessing will always be new and fresh in my life. When I think about the Lord and all the good things that he does... When I think about all the things that he does for me, the things that I truly do not deserve that he does for me, the truth is I don't deserve anything from God. I don't deserve any good thing from him. I can't stand here today and tell you that I can stand on this platform and I can share this message with you today because I'm so good and because I've done such good things. I tell you, if you know me like he knows me, you'd say, you ought to go sit down. You ain't got nothing to say. But his grace... His grace sees me through it all. His grace brings me through it all. His grace looks beyond my fault and sees my needs. I can tell you today, I am here only because of the goodness of Jesus Christ. I mean, I never forget, as the psalm says, all the good things he does for me. Listen to the words of 2 Peter 1 and 3. By his, I love this passage, by his divine power, God has given us everything. Somebody say everything. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. One of the great things he's done for me, one of the great things he's done for you is to love us. That's the reason I can love him, because he first loved me. 1 John 4 and verse 10, this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. 1 John 4 and 19, we love because he first loves us. That's why. I love him because he's so worthy and because he's done so much, so much for me. Well, if that is, if that's the beginning of the process, then we have to ask ourselves, how, if I'm to love him, how, how am I supposed to love him? Because the truth is when I look around the world, 
And if I'm looking around the world today for a description or a good example of how to love, the truth is I'm going to find a million different ways. And the truth is most of them are probably going to be pretty shallow. Because the world bases love off of what you do for me. I love if you love me. I love if you give to me. I love if you've been kind to me. So I think the reality is we can't afford to look at the world because we're going we're gonna to get some mixed up pictures. If we're going to look at love, the Bible says he first loved us. So the greatest example I could look at is the originator. It's the one who designed it. So when we look at the Bible, the Bible gives us a clear picture on how we're to love God. And notice in the passage when Jesus said this is the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God. Notice what he says first of all, with all your heart. What does that mean? Now the Greek term for the word heart is the word cardia. That makes sense to us, doesn't it? Cardia speaks of the very center or the core of our being. It's the base where our personalities are rooted. Proverbs 4 and 23 gives us this good encouragement above all else. Guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. How dangerous it can be for you and I, friends, if we don't guard our hearts. There are things that though they are good in our lives, they're not the greatest things in our life, and therefore we must guard our hearts against them for the challenge of doing the good. Bill Bright, who for many years led the campus crusade for Christ, said this, and I quote, your heart is like a throne. It's one of two ways. Either you're on the throne of your life or Christ is on the throne of your heart and you're kneeling before him saying, Lord, I give it all to you and whatever you want from my life, it's yours. Friend, it's about loving him from the very core and the very center of our being. God wants to be loved from that place in your heart. You know, so often in this life, you and I know we love by the outward things. We love by uh, a person's appearance. We love by a person's actions. We love by a person's ways. We, we, we love because of what they do for us and what they've been for us and what they'll be for us. God wants you and I to go a little deeper than the surface. God wants us to love from our heart. When Jesus said, love the Lord with all your heart, that's the place he's talking about, from the very core and the center of our being. You see, to love the Lord with all my heart is to allow him to be seated as the ruler over my life because as the Bible says, out of your heart, everything you do will flow from the heart. And so if I love him from the heart, I know that everything that flows from my life is going to come from that place. He goes on to say, love the Lord with all your soul. Love the Lord with all your soul. It has been said that the closest term to the word soul is the word you and I call emotion. How many of y'all have some emotions? I think I need to ask that again. How many of y'all have some emotions? Yeah, we all do, don't we? The night before Jesus was arrested in the garden, just prior to his crucifixion, we find Jesus in the garden and he's praying at this most pivotal time in his life. Mark chapter 14 and verse 34, he says these words, My soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. My soul is overwhelmed with such sorrow, it takes me to the point of death. He's describing the soul as the place where he felt great emotion. 
Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let's put it this way. It's loving God from the place in my life where feelings flow. If we never have any feelings about God, there'll never be any tears of joy over his gladness. There'll never be any passion in following him. There'll never be any joy that is our strength. There'll never be any delight in his word. There'll never be compassion for his people. Friends, we've missed it if we've tried to love him outside of our soul, our emotions. Now, there'll be people who will tell you, you can't get emotional. There'll be people who say, you ought not to show emotions. And you ought not to get your emotions confused with your relationship with Christ. Let me ask you something. I, can, can you take emotion out of who you are? No. No. It's who I am. There's some days, I ought, I'll just be honest with you, there's some days I feel on top of the world. Have you ever had a day you felt like the world was on top of you? There's some days I feel happy. Some days I don't feel so happy. There's some days I feel like I got the tiger by the tail, and some days I feel like the tail has a hold of my, the tiger has a hold of my tail. I'll get that straight in a second. (laughs) There's some days my emotions, listen, there's some days The best way I know to describe it is this. Often I'll tell Paul, you know, today I just don't feel like myself. I don't know who it is I feel like, but it's not like me. You see, we are created with emotion. And often when we come to our relationship with God, we say, you know what? I can be emotional everywhere else except in my relationship with God. But my friend, you'll not find that in the Bible. In fact, I would submit to you, this year I've been doing in my devotions, I'm reading a a book uh, by Dr. George Wood, who used to be our former general superintendent of the Assemblies of God, and he wrote a book on the Psalms. I would probably submit to you the Psalms is the most emotional book in the Bible. There's times when he says, oh, Lord, I bless you. And then there's other times he says, kill every one of my enemies. (laughs) God, I want to see you smack them down. (laughs) And and it's not like he's having remorse already. Get them, God. I'm telling you, if you don't believe there's emotion, just read through the book of Psalm. But the reality is, You'll find you and I have emotions because the God who created us has emotions. Notice the words of Zephaniah 3 and 17 says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears, and he will rejoice over you with joyful songs. That's a good word for some of y'all today. Sometimes you don't feel like God could rejoice over you. You see your failures. You see your weaknesses. You see all the areas that you're not so good in. I would declare to you today, God rejoices. God rejoices over us. You see, he's a God with emotions, and we are his people, and he created us with emotions. It's part of our design. Now, listen, for those who fear that I've gone a little too extreme out there with the emotion part, listen, everything in life, I have to keep my emotions in check sometimes, don't I? How many of you in the morning when the clock goes off will feel like getting up and going to work? How many of you, when you get your paycheck, feel like giving all of your paycheck away to the creditors? You know, it's a neat idea to get a paycheck and keep it. Some of y'all are getting ready to, you've already been doing taxes, and, and the IRS this year is now standing with one hand, but they got both hands out this year. There are... There are things in this life that are going to 
Paul, and I'm not always going to feel like doing it. Everything in life, I want to give you a really big, big word here that's so critical to this. It's the word balance. Some days I may not feel on top of the world, but you know what? I know it's a season and it's going to pass. Don't be afraid to worship and live for God with your emotion. We're to love him with all of our heart, and the Bible says, with all of our soul. He goes on to say, love the Lord with all of your mind. What's my mind? What's my mind? It's the place of my thinking. It's the place of my meditation. It's the place of my reasoning. The mind is the place of thinking and feeling thoughts, whether good or bad. It's the place of of deep thoughts. I want to ask you today, are you serving God with your mind? Is God being loved and is God being honored in your thoughts? What do your thoughts have to say about your love for God. You see, to love the Lord with our mind is to submit my thinking and submit my reasoning to Him. We won't act often on something that is outwardly a dishonor to God, but what He's calling us to is to not dishonor Him in my own thinking. How many of you know sometimes we'd probably scare people if they knew what we were really thinking? People would be like, oh, Lord, you wouldn't want to be around me. <laughs> sometimes our thinking, we can have a smile on our face, and we have the exact opposite in our thinking, don't we? How many times have people come to you, and you weren't having a, a quite as, as wonderful a day as you wanted to, but they come to you, and they say, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm great. It's like you're lying through your teeth. We could put a smile on our face, but our thoughts are something totally different. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, our minds can be a part of the sinful world that you and I live in. Listen to the words of Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. It says this, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. We can all relate to that, can't we? But those who live according, in accordance with the Spirit, have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind that is governed by the flesh is death. But the mind that is governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Why? Because of their mind. So how how do I love God with my mind? How do I love him with my mind? Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 gives us some really good description. You were taught with, your, with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. How many of y'all remember the old self before you came to Jesus? Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and in holiness. Romans 12 and 2 give us these words, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Love the Lord with all of your heart. Love him with all your soul. Love him with all of your mind, that place of thinking and reasoning. Love God in the place of your meditation. Love him in your thinking capacity. May there be, often I've shared with you, may there be no parts dark in our lives, even in the area of our thinking. You'll notice he goes on then in the passage to the last point, and he says we're to love him with all of our strength. 
Love him with all of our strength. It gives us a picture of physical capacity. Each day, beginning with a fresh capacity to love him with our energy, our vitality, and our strength. Each day, we begin with a new capacity to love him with our strength. The question is, we must answer today, what are we spending our strength on? There are many good things that you and I can spend our strength on, but at the end of the day, listen, I didn't say they're sinful things. I didn't say they're terrible things. Often they are good things. Often I have days where I am so busy and I get to the end of the day and I look upon and I say, I don't even know what I got done today. They were good things. But if I'm not careful, I can get to the end of the day and have an entire day full of good things, but somehow the good in all the good I've missed the greatest. See, there's a life that is to be lived. There are duties that you and I must fulfill through the day. Today, the truth is, if you are a parent with children at home today, the truth is you're very busy. The truth is today, if you are here and you have no children at home, you are very busy. The point is, life is exceedingly busy. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what area of life you're in. Life is busy and time goes by so quickly. The other day I had, uh, I I don't know who I was the wonderful recipient of, but I picked up the flu the other day. And uh, man, if I could have described it in a couple ways, it would have been, Lord, I'm dying And I remember laying there in the chair and I thought, you know, there are so many days when I want to have a day where I can just kind of do whatever I want. And and I had the entire day, and and honest truth, I stayed in the chair the whole day. And I remember looking at Paula and going, I can't believe it's 4.30 already. I'm like, even when you're sick, time goes fast. I'm like... How is it 4.30 already? I haven't done anything but sit in the chair. It's because life is flying by. Life, man, it's so busy. Life is going by you and I at warp speed. And the reality is there are things we have to live. We have to work. We have to feed our families. We have to pay the bills. We have to, it won't be long, we get to mow the lawn. We had to shovel snow. We're going to get to mow the lawn pretty soon. There's many things we have to do in life. They are all good things. But friend, while you're in the business of doing, don't forget the greatest thing. Loving God with the strength that he's given you. Don't forget to make God a part of your day. Don't allow the good things to push out your time for the greatest thing, which is God. The Bible says we are to love him with all of our strength. What that means is everything my strength will be spent on today. I want to love him in that thing. All the energies he's given me, I want to love him with that. Love the Lord with all of your strength. Now, you will notice something as we go through those parts. He says, we talked about the heart. We've talked about the soul. We've talked about the mind. We've talked about the strength. But there's a key word in front of every one of those, and it's probably one of the most important words of all. You'll notice when you look at it, it's this word, all. All. All of my heart all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength. I think really what he's saying, and probably the prayer 
that comes from our hearts as he's encouraged us is this, Lord, I want everything in my life, I want everything in my heart, I want everything in my emotions, I want everything in my thinking and my strength today to love you. God, I want you to be first place. I want you to be first place because you know what, friends? He put us first place. Jesus put us first place. That's why he was willing to leave heaven to come to this lowly earth. I was reading the other day in the Word, and it was relaying the story how that Jesus was on the cross and how that people were walking past the cross and they were mocking him and they were saying, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross and, and if you are the Son of God, do all these things and you're really not the Son of God. And the Bible says they just kept mocking him, not knowing he could have called 10,000 upon 10,000 on 10,000 of angels to come. But he stayed there, endured the mocking and the ridicule. Why? Because he was putting you and I in first place. He's put us first place. And friend, as a response to that, our response ought to be to put him first place. Lord, I want you to have all of me. I don't want to hold back any part of my heart. I don't want to hold back any part of my emotions. I don't want to hold back any part of my mind. I don't want to hold back any part of my strength. I want you to be loved in every part of my life. Friends, would you mind bowing your heads this morning as we pray? Heavenly Father, I am so thankful today that you love us the way you do. And Lord, really, I, I have to say, Lord, that I'm, I'm amazed and, Lord, I'm really in awe of the depth and the length of that you've went to, to love us. I don't, honestly, Lord, I don't understand knowing, knowing me like I know me. And my friends here today, across this room, knowing themselves the way they really know themselves. God, I'm amazed that you love us like you do. But you have declared in your word that you do love us. And that you gave up your life so that we could have life. That life is found in you, Jesus. Lord, I pray today for every one of these people that are gathered in this room today. First of all, my prayer is that, Lord, we'll all know you as our Savior and Lord. We'll all come to that place, Lord, where we yield our heart and life to you. And then secondly, as we follow that up, in response to that, Lord, we'll all begin to love you with all of our heart, with all of our emotions, with all of our thinking, and with all of our energies. That, Lord, we'll give you the best that we have to give. Lord, I pray that today for each one of us. And I ask you today, Lord, that you would speak to each person in this room. And Lord, I pray today for those that don't know you as Savior. They've not experienced today salvation through Jesus Christ. Lord, my prayer is that they will today, before this day draws to a close, Lord, they would yield their heart and life to you. And Lord Jesus, that you'll help us just to love you with all we have. Lord, I ask it today in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Friends, would you please keep your heads bowed for a couple of moments? This morning, I want to, I just want to talk to you for just a moment as we close. I'd like to talk to you today about your relationship with Jesus. My first question is, friend, do you know him as your Savior? Do you know him as your Lord? Not just as a religious figure or someone that other people talk about. Do you know Jesus Christ today to be the Lord of your life? If not, friend, you can. It's, it's not a hard thing. You don't have to do any works. You don't have to join the church. You don't have to do any work. Actually, it's a free gift, and all you have to do is just receive the gift. So have you received the gift of salvation and the forgiveness of sin? If not, I want to give you the opportunity today, right here in this room, before we head out, Right where you're sitting today. Right in the place where you are. I want to tell you that he loves you. There's nothing you've ever done that's caused him to not love you. And there's nothing you've done so great that you say he can't love me. Because he loves every one of us, friends. So I want to ask you today, do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Do you know him as your Savior and Lord? Here's what I'd like to do, friend. If you've not yet received Jesus as your Savior, right where you're at, I'm not going to embarrass you. Heads are bowed. You just say, Pastor, I'd like to ask you to remember me in prayer today. I'd like to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Right where you're at, friend, would you just lift up your hand and just let me know so that I know how to pray this morning. As we draw this service to a close day, please remember me in prayer today, Pastor. I want to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. Yes. Yes. All across the room, friend, you can put your hand down after you've raised it. Others say, I just, I just want to know Jesus today as my Savior. Others, you raise your hand and say, please pray for me today. Yes. I just want to know him as my Savior. How many of us would join these and say, just remember me in prayer today, Pastor? Yes. Here's what I want us to do right where you're at. We're going to pray a prayer together, you and I and everyone in this room. This is not a hard thing. It's really just about opening your heart and inviting him into your life. So with heads bowed, I'm going to ask all across this room, would you pray this prayer with me? And friend, if you lifted your hand, just pray this prayer from your heart. Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am so amazed at your great love for me. Thank you for caring for me. Thank you for dying on the cross to give me life. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I ask you to come into my life and be my Savior. Lord Jesus, Forgive me of all my sin and be my Lord and I'll be your son and daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, friend, it's not a hard thing. The Bible says if we just confess to him, if we confess to him, I believe this today. If you prayed that prayer today from your heart, I believe all of heaven heard you. And the Bible says that all the angels in heaven rejoice over even one that comes to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. What a wonderful miracle. I want to tell you, if you prayed that prayer, old friend, 
this is a brand new journey you're starting on. Brand new journey you're starting on. And I can tell you this, there's nobody more committed to you today than Jesus Christ himself. Would you stand with me today? I know we just prayed that prayer, but honestly, I'd like to close with one more prayer if you'll just be patient with me today. This is really a prayer that just is about giving him our everything. We've talked about loving him with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. And I'd just like us to close because I'll be honest with you, I had to preach this sermon to Jerry before I could ever come and preach this sermon today to you in this place. And the Lord is really talking to me about this thing because I get so busy. It's so easy to get so busy that other things can take priority. So I'm going to ask you, would you mind bowing your heads one more time? And, and I just want to encourage you. I'm going to lead us just in prayer. I'm just going to pray out loud. But right where you're at, you just pray whatever prayer the Lord is speaking to you about this morning. Whatever in this service God's been speaking to your heart about, whether, whether it's your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, whatever it is. And let's just culminate all of our prayers together by saying, Lord, just be the Lord in every area of my life. Heavenly Father, today as we come to you in this place, Lord, we are so grateful that you love us like you do and that you've never, 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 never given up on us. Lord Jesus, you know, you know the busy life we all live. And Lord, you know daily the things that are pulling for our attention. And Father, you know the daily things, Lord, that are pulling for our lives. And Father, I just ask you today, Lord, that you will be with us in this room. Lord, I want to love you with all of my heart. God, the center of who I am. Everything in my heart. God, I want it to honor you. Lord, I want to love you today with all of my emotions. And Lord, you know we all have many emotions. Lord, I want to honor you today in my life with those emotions and all of the things that that brings to my life. Lord, I want to love you today with my mind and my thinking and my reasoning and my meditation. Help me, Lord. And Help me in the areas of my thinking, Lord, that others around me don't even know. But, Lord, you know. And I want you to be honored in my thinking. And, Lord, I thank you that you give us a brand new day every day. And, Lord, the strength that you give me every day, I want it to be for you. And I want to love you with all my strength so that at the end of my day, Lord, I've given you the best of what I've had. Lord, that's our goal. That's our prayer that you will be first place in our lives always because, Lord, you put us in first place. And so, Lord, we just want to respond back to that by honoring you in every way we can. We love you. We're so thankful, Lord, for you and all you've done for us. Thank you for this great day to serve you. Thank you for great friends that we could all be together today in your house. Father, I pray you'll bless each one now I ask. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen, and amen. I really want to encourage you with something um, that I really feel led to share with you. Um, about a week ago, um, well, it could be longer than that, but God has really been stirring in my heart that I would know the Father's love more, that I would, it sounds gen generic to say it, the things that God reveals to your heart and then you try to articulate it, it's that they don't ever come out exactly right. But just to go be in His presence more. I didn't know what Jerry was going to preach on. All he told me, God changed his sermon yesterday. He, I was painting and he came in and said, God changed my sermon. I said, well, what are you going to preach on? And he said, the, the love of God. And so any time that I take time in the service to prophesy or talk or encourage you, uh, I always then question it afterward. 
I couldn't believe how much what God said through me was in your sermon and I didn't know that. And I felt like, thank you God, how much I needed that. But how much I needed this sermon today. But what I wanna share with you is something that I'm doing and I wanted to know, don't tell me if you're doing it or not, but I wanted to ask, see if you wanted to, to do this with me. I started on Thursday, a, I, I'm not calling it a 21 day fast um, because I don't wanna get going in it and aspire to great things and then, you know, <laughs> not. Um, so what I started doing was I got out a journal and I've been going in and sitting in the same chair. I chose a different chair. I'm sitting in a different chair and shutting the door. And in the journal, I've just been starting to write um, just anything that comes to my heart, okay? And then I'm just taking more time to pray. And I'm fasting. So I called it a 21-day prayer and fasting, but I didn't know which... Like if I, I, I don't know how to say that. Like if there's some days in our schedule I'm not able to fast, then I'm just going to spend more time in prayer. But my goal is um, I wanted to set aside, and this is what I wrote down, 21 days to begin to know the Father's love in an even greater way. Yeah. So I marked that off and wrote that down. And, I've only been doing it three days and I feel so different. And then his, when he came in and said, I'm changing my sermon and he said what it was on, I went, well, how about that? <laughs> That's exactly. So I want to encourage you. Maybe you would want to do something like that. Maybe you would want to mark off. There's no magic mystical thing about that number. I just picked 21 days. I've heard people say that. So I thought I would do that because I just want to do more than I've done in the past. Does that make sense? Like if I've prayed some, if I've read some, I want to go in and do some more. I heard about a guy that he would set a chair in front of him. And when he prayed, he would sit in a chair and he would face the chair and he would visualize talking to Jesus. And when that man died, they found him kneeling in front of the uh, the chair where Jesus he pictured Jesus to be sitting with his head laying on Jesus's lap and I want to encourage you to make a place for Jesus in your home for you I wanted to put into your mind maybe you would want to join me in something like that and then lastly I wanted to encourage you if you don't have a Bible reading plan really felt to ask you about the 21 day thing. And I felt to tell you that we're still doing the read through the new Testament this year. And those, uh, charts are out at the welcome center. And I think we're on Luke. I don't have it in front of me, like 22, whatever that week is, but just jump in. You know what I'm saying? You don't gotta like, I don't have all the backstory, you know, just jump in. And the reason why is because this week, is his death on the cross that we're reading about. And it goes with your sermon. I really, I'm not just trying to talk too much today, you guys. I just really felt like I wanted to say to you, m maybe you would want to do a 21 day of something. And if you don't have a Bible reading plan or you're not doing that particular one yet, we're kind of all doing it together. Maybe you haven't got on board yet. Um, no condemnation, just the papers are out there. So I just, I want to know the Father's love even in a greater way than I've ever experienced. So. That, that's what I wanted to say. So may the Lord bless you today. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bless you wherever you walk, when you come in and when you go out. May his grace always cover your life. God bless you today. May his grace and strength be great for you. Have a great day. God bless you.